In this video, we're going to learn about hyperbolic functions. And hyperbolic functions are functions that are in the form of y is equal to a over x plus q. This is the standard form of a hyperbolic function. And as we can see, in these types of functions, we have our variable in the denominator. So these are going to be quite different than the functions that we've dealt with in the past few videos. They're going to take on a very different appearance to linear functions and parabolic or quadratic functions. So let's start out by looking at one of the most simple hyperbolic functions, and that is y is equal to 1 over x. We can see that in this case, our a is 1 and we have a q of 0. And if we were to graph the function of y is equal to 1 over x, it would look like this. So here in red is what we would get if we were to graph y is equal to 1 over x. Here we have our y-axis and here we have our x-axis. And these two curves are meant to be symmetrical. So what we have in this first quadrant is meant to be exactly the same as what we have in the third quadrant. And I apologize if it doesn't look like that because again I have drawn these by hand. But another important thing to notice about these curves is that they are going to go onwards in both directions. And as we can see, in both of these curves, as we go further and further up or up the y-axis or across the x-axis, these curves are going to go closer and closer and closer to the x and y axes, but they're never actually going to touch the x and y axes. They are going to go on in these directions, going closer and closer and closer to these lines, but they're never going to touch or cross those lines. And it turns out that we actually have a very special name for exactly that. It is called an asymptote. In this function, we have two asymptotes. We have the x-axis, which is acting as one asymptote, and we have the y-axis, which is acting as the second asymptote. So let's take a second to actually define what an asymptote is. An asymptote is a line that the function approaches but never reaches or crosses. So we can see that we have two such lines in this function. The first line is the y-axis, where x is equal to 0. So x is equal to 0 is our first asymptote. This is a line that our function is going to approach but is never going to cross or touch. Our second asymptote is this line. This is the x-axis. This is where y is equal to 0. So y is equal to 0 is the other asymptote. That is our horizontal asymptote. It is the line that our function is going to approach but never touch or cross. So for the function y is equal to 1 over x, the y is equal to 0 asymptote is known as our horizontal asymptote. We can see that it is the horizontal line. And x is equal to 0 is known as our vertical asymptote. It is the vertical line. So it's very important to understand this basic graph because the hyperbolas that we are going to encounter are all going to be variations of this. They are going to look very similar to this but have slight differences and those differences are going to depend on our value of a and our value of q. So let's take a second and look at how a and q are going to impact the appearance of these curves. A is going to tell us which two quadrants our curves are going to lie in. We are always going to have two curves that look like this when we are dealing with hyperbolic functions. And it turns out that our two curves are either going to be present in quadrant 1 and 3 or in quadrant 2 and 4. So just as we have a hyperbola that looks like this, we can have one that looks like this. So we're either going to have two curves that are in quadrant 1 and 3, or two curves that are in quadrant 2 and 4. The sign of A is going to tell us which two quadrants our curves are going to lie. So if A is positive, 
we are going to have our two curves in quadrants 1 and 3. If A is negative, then we are going to have our two curves in quadrants 2 and 4. And the reason that is, is because if we look at this standard form of our hyperbolic function, and let's say we had a Q of 0, we would have Y is equal to A over X. And if we were trying to solve for A, we would get Y times X is equal to A. So if our A is positive, that means that we either have to have both Y and X positive, or both y and x negative, because the product of two positive numbers is going to be positive, and the product of two negative numbers is also going to be positive. So in order for us to have a positive a, we need to have our y and our x of the same sign. And we can see that in quadrants 1 and 3, we have either x and y positive, or x and y negative. Now if a was negative, we know that our y and x values have to have two different signs in order for their product to equal a negative number. And in quadrants 2 and 4, we're going to have either x negative and y positive, or y negative and x positive. So that is why if a is positive, we're going to have our two curves in quadrants 1 and 3. And if a is negative, we're going to have our two curves in quadrants 2 and 4. Now let's take a look at the effect of q. I'm going to copy our graph of y is equal to 1 over x here. Here I'm just going to write our standard form. So if we're looking at the effect of q, Q is going to represent your vertical shift. And what that means is that depending on our value of Q, our two curves are going to be shifted either upwards or downwards. And if Q is greater than zero, we're going to see an upward shift of this graph. And if Q is negative, we're going to see a downward shift. So Q is going to represent our vertical shift. Another thing that we need to make a note of is that in grade 10, we are always going to have our two asymptotes as x is equal to 0. This is going to represent our vertical asymptote, and that is always going to be the case. And y is equal to q is going to represent our horizontal asymptote. That is always going to be the case, at least for functions that we are going to be dealing with in grade 10. So these are two very important things to make a note of. x is equal to 0, which is basically our y-axis. This is always going to be our vertical asymptote in grade 10. And y is equal to q. This value of q is going to represent our horizontal asymptote. So we can see that in this function, y is equal to 1 over x, our q is equal to 0. And that means that y is equal to 0 is our horizontal asymptote. And x is equal to 0 is our vertical asymptote, just like it always will be in any other example that we deal with in grade 10. So those are two very important things to remember. And the reason that x is equal to 0 is our vertical asymptote is because if we were to plug in 0 for x into our function, what would we get? y is equal to a divided by 0 plus q. And we know that anything divided by 0 is going to be undefined. If we're dividing by 0, we are going to get a math error. It is undefined. Our function is never going to have a value where x is equal to 0. It is going to approach 0, but it's never going to equal to 0. And that is why x is equal to 0 is our vertical asymptote. Now let's take a second here to look at what would happen with different values for q. So let's say we had a curve in which our value for q was greater than 0. So our value for q in this case is greater than 0. That would mean that we would have a vertical shift upwards. And y is equal to q is going to become our new horizontal asymptote. That would mean that somewhere above this x-axis line is going to be 
our horizontal asymptote. Let's say it's somewhere over here. And what that means is that our two curves are essentially just going to have shifted upwards. Our two curves are going to look something like this. We're still going to have our vertical asymptote of x is equal to 0, and our new horizontal asymptote is going to be y is equal to q. Our curves have essentially just shifted upwards. Our two asymptotes are almost going to create our two new axes. If we look at how we can compare this curve of f of x is equal to 1 over x to this one, we've essentially just created a new set of axes with our vertical and horizontal asymptote. And if we think of them as our two new axes, our curves are going to look almost exactly like the curves that we had in this case. Now let's look at what would happen if we had a q of less than 0. So in this case, our q is less than 0. That means we would have our new horizontal asymptote somewhere down here, where q is less than 0. So this would become our new horizontal asymptote, y is equal to q. We would still have our vertical asymptote as our y-axis, where x is equal to 0. But now, since our q is less than 0, we would have a downwards vertical shift. So we can see that we have shifted these two curves downwards. And again, I apologize if these don't look symmetrical because I've drawn them by hand, but the idea is that these two curves are symmetrical. And in both of these cases, we would have a positive value for a and that is because our two curves are found in quadrants 1 and 3 so in both cases we would have a as a positive number but we could just as easily have a negative value for a if a was negative we would have the same thing except it would be in quadrants 2 and 4 they would be in our other two quadrants and in the next video, we're going to take what we have learned in this lesson and apply it to an example. And hopefully that will make things a lot more clear.